Hello! In this video, we're going to write another string function together. We'll also do a bit of unit testing along the way. Hopefully, you already have the string functions project from an earlier video. If not, get it now. If you're enrolled in CSSE 120 or 221, you can check out string functions from your subversion repository. Otherwise, you can download the zip file containing the files. Here's the problem we're going to solve. We want to implement the first word function that takes a string and mutates it so that the result is just the first word of the original. Before we jump into coding, let's think about that for a minute. What do we mean by the first word? A first thought might be everything up to the first space. That's a good start, but it's actually more complicated than it might seem. What about punctuation? And some languages, like German, run words together. Sometimes it's useful to break problems like this down into a simpler one, solve the simpler version of the problem, and then modify the solution to handle more complex cases. When we do that, it's important to check that our original solution still works. Let's give it a try. In Eclipse, I have the string functions.c file open. I'm going to go ahead and add my name to the comments at the top. The first thing I want to do is write some tests for this code. To do that, I'm going to go down to the main function and write my test code in here. So the first thing I want to do is add a comment to note what I'm doing. So I'm testing first word. And then for the output, since we're going to have lots of different tests, I'm going to put in a printf and print out the name of the function that I'm testing. So the first problem I want to try to solve here is just breaking the string up based on the first space that we find. So let's create a test string. And we'll initialize that to Juliet is the sun. And then since we're going to mutate that string, let's print out the initial value. So we'll do a print f and say original percent s. Here I'll just put fw test 1, and that should print out the original value. Then I'll call my mutating function. So I'll call first word and pass fw test 1 to it. So that should mutate that string to just be Juliet. And so then I'll print out the result. And then I'm going to follow that by the expected value. And here the expected value would be Juliet. Now as you move along in your programming career, You'll actually use unit test frameworks that will automatically check that the result matches what you think uh, it should be. And so we don't have to actually read the console to check these. But rather than add that complication here, we're just going to print out the result and the expected value, and we'll compare it by eye. So I've got my test written. I'm going to save that and hit Control F11 to compile and run it. And so we've got that we're in first word, and we've got the original. And the result's actually the same, and expected is Juliet. Um, a few things I don't like about that. I think I'm going to add in line 87 that I'm testing first word. And I probably better put some punctuation in here. So after original uh, and percent %s in line 89, I'll put in a comma. And I'm going to put in a comma after the result string here as well. And I'll go ahead and Control F11 to run that again. There's something strange about my result. I forgot to pass the FW test string to printf, which is what the warning in line 91 says. So I better put FW test 1 here. The interesting thing is even though I didn't pass that argument, it still printed the right thing. Uh, and so that must be a leftover pointer from the first call to printf. Um, let's run that and see what happens. OK, so now it's printing out like I'd expect because I haven't implemented first word yet. So let's go up to first word function and try to implement that. All right, so here we are in first word. And we need to figure out how we're going to loop over this string, looking for the first space, and then truncate that string to just be up to that point of the string. So I guess I need a loop. So I better have a loop index. Let's do an int i. And I'm going to initialize that to 0. 
Now, this is a loop where I'm going to stop partway through, and so it seems to me like a while loop might be the right thing to use here. So I'll do a while loop. And one thing I like to do when I'm writing code like this is sometimes I'll put a comment in instead of the actual code that I need here. So well, let's see, well, I'm not at the first space. And then I can come back and figure out the actual code for that. So while I'm not at the first space, I guess I just want to move on to the next character. And so when I get done, I should be pointing to the first space in this string. And so I want to truncate the string at that spot. Well, the nice thing about strings is they use this null terminator to indicate where the end of the string is. So since i is going to be at the first space, if I turn that first space into a null terminator, I should get the right result. So at this spot, I want to change the string at position i to contain the null terminator. All right, so I can save that. Well, I still need to write the condition in the while. And this is where I'm going to use one of my C type functions, because we've got a built-in predicate that'll check whether a character is a space. And so we'll check whether the character at position i is a space. So I save that, and let's go ahead and run it and see what we get. So the original, Juliet is the sun. Oh, the result is nothing. And we expected Juliet. Anyone see the bug? Right, we're supposed to keep going while it's not a space. So we'll put a bang in there. So while not is space, let's see what that does when I run it. All right, the result is Juliet, and expected value is Juliet. Excellent, so that worked out. Let's try adding another test case. We've got it working for strings that have multiple words. What happens if we pass it a string that has just one word? So let's go down to the end of the file and add another test in here. So I'm going to copy lines 92 through 95 and paste those in. And I'm going to rename my variables. And I'm going to change the test string to just Romeo. And so my expected value here is also Romeo. And I'm going to go ahead and run that. And that works out. I got the answer that I expected. But I've done some C programming. And I know there's a really subtle problem here. And because C is such a low-level language, we sometimes run into things like this. So let's go back up to our first word function. And I'm going to add in a print statement to show what's going on here. So after the increment in the loop, I'm going to add a print. And I'm going to print out that we're about to check a particular character. And I'm going to put the character inside square brackets so I can clearly see what it is and a new line. And I'm going to pass it that next character of the string. So I'm going to save that. And let's go ahead and run it. And if we look at our console, look at all these characters that we're checking when we're trying to check Romeo. So we check the O, M, E, O. Well, that's our null character for the end of the line. And then we're checking a whole bunch of gibberish until we get lucky. And some place later on in memory, we actually find a space character. And that causes the loop to end. Let's look at that code again. Well, we find that space much farther along in memory, and that causes the loop to end. But then how come we're getting the right answer to print out? Well, that's because we're leaving that original null character that was in there alone. Let me draw a picture. Here's what we have when first word runs for this test case. str points to the string Romeo in memory with its null terminator. Following that in memory are just arbitrary values, one of which happens to be a space. Our code changes that space to a null terminator. But that doesn't affect the original string. It still ends with the original null terminator. So what we actually need to do here is change our loop so that we'll stop as soon as we see the first null character or the first thing that's not a space. So I'm going to change my while loop and say, I want to keep running as long as that next character is not equal to 
the null character, and it's not a space. And so if I run it again, now if we look at the console, we only check as far as we need to. We check the O, M, E, O, and then we check, we're going to check that last character and we find that it's a null and so the loop terminates when we'd like it to. All right, so that's working. Let me go ahead and comment out my little test code there and run it again. And I look at my results and I see that result was Juliet, expected Juliet, result Romeo, expected Romeo. And so that change we made to check the null character didn't break any of our previous tests. All right, well, let's think of another test case that we could add here. On the slides, we talked about what would happen if we added punctuation. So let's add a test that includes some punctuation. So I'll make this test three. And we'll say hark, who goes there. And so the expected result here would be hark. So I'll save my test and run it, and we'll see what happens. And notice that my result now is hark, comma. I get that extra comma there instead of just hark. And so let's go look at the code and see what we can do to fix that. Or we're continuing the loop as long as we have characters that aren't spaces. We actually want to be able to end the loop when we get any separator character between words. So I'm going to do a little bit of refactoring here. I'm going to write a new helper function that's going to check whether I've got a word separator character. And I'm just going to pass a single character to it. And we're going to check whether it's a separator. And so since I'm just doing a refactoring here, what I'm going to do is take the check that I was doing, this is space check from first word, and I'm going to do that inside this one. So my first implementation of is word separator is just going to return is space of C. And then I'll change first word to call my new is word separator function. So that shouldn't change the behavior. It just changes how the code's organized. We pass the character to his word separator, and then we test whether it's a space. So let's go ahead and run that. And I've got an error. And the problem here is the order of the functions in C, I have to have the function declared before I use it. But I have my function declared here in line 39 through 41, which is after I used it. So I'm going to select that code in lines 39 through 41. I'm going to cut the function from there and go up and paste it in above the first word function. And while I'm at it, I should probably have added a comment on this. So let me do that now. All right, so let me try to hit Control F11 and compile and run that again. OK, so it, it ran. And I passed my first two tests. I still have Juliet and Romeo. And I'm still getting the same error on the heart test. So that's actually a successful refactoring. It's behaving the same. And now I've got this separate is word separator function where I can deal with things like this comma. So in is word separator, I want it to be a word separator, well, if it's a space or if the character is equal to a comma. So I'll save that and run that. And now I get the result I expect. My result is hark, and I expected hark, and that extra comma is gone. Just for completeness, we could add some test cases to deal with things like periods and exclamation points and question marks and other things that might come in between words. You can do that on your own. And so I'll wrap up here. Until next time, I'm Kurt. Catch you later.